thank you for being here. Uh, this is uh, one of um, the, the English talks we have here uh, today. And um, this time we have Nicola Saleno. Uh, he's uh, an Italian um, recognized um, in the, um, expert in the industry of email security. Uh, he, has over, uh, he has 15 years of experience in email marketing and deliver the <laughs> sorry. Deliver deliverability. deliverability. Yeah, yeah. And has worked uh, with the biggest email senders in the world uh, to protect their brands and to boost their revenue. And if you don't know it, uh, he's a great comedian as well. <laughs> I, I used to be, and I say that I used to be a comedian because if nobody loves to something I say, I can say that now you know why I stopped. Uh, but Wait a moment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Violetta. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, all the organization, WordCamp. Uh, it's awesome to be here, to be honest. And I actually speak Spanish uh, as well, um, no catalan, sorry, castellano. Uh, entonces, si quieres preguntar algo en español, intentaré contestar también en español. Uh, but this will be uh, in English. And I hope, hope also to make sure that there is enough room for questions. So um, the topic we are going to cover today are huge, are huge, are broad, are deep. Uh, in other words, I could spend hours, if not day, talking about them nonstop, straight. That's not what I, what I want to do, and uh, not what I want to do today. Actually, I just want to make sure that everybody understands what they are, why they exist, and uh, why this could be a problem, but also there might be a solution for WordPress administrators, owners, etc., etc. Uh, just so I know, you know, a little poll. Uh, did any of you ever heard of uh, SPF, Dikim, or Dmark? Just raise your hand. Okay, uh, love. Okay, but it, even just the fact that you heard of them. But I'm surprised. I, I'm happy, honestly, to know that many of you already know what they are. Um, and for the others, it's perfectly fine because, again, with a job that I have, the kind of stuff that I do every day, I, I encounter people that work in, the, you know, in IT for 20 years, and they never had to truly know what, what the DMARC is. Um, so, and it's OK, because it's a very specific niche. Uh, but I feel that it's going to be more and more important. But let's start very quickly who I am. Uh, Violetta already <laughs> introduced me. Uh, but basically, yeah, I've been working in email. Uh, especially email security, email deliverability for a very long time. I work for the biggest brands uh, in the world. Um, doing what, you'll say? Uh, good questions. Let's move on. No, can see? No, the um, deliverability means, somebody probably already know, um, usually in Spanish it's translated as entregabilidad, but it means uh, it's all the know-how related to make sure that emails are landing in inbox instead of spam. And other than that, there's also all the aspects about brand protection related to that. But deliverability itself, it's all the science and art related to the fact that email is reaching the inbox instead of the spam. But that if any of you as a business knows that and using, is, is using the email as a channel, knows that uh, if the emails are not getting the inbox and not getting open, you are losing money. So email is money, and especially deliverability is money. So I help legitimate business to make money uh, they, they deserve because they are sending to subscribers. But one um, important thing of all of this is the email security part, and we'll get there. Um, yeah, so, and many of you, being probably, probably technical, know that email is super old, very old. It's more than 50 years old. Some, this might surprise somebody here, but it's super, super old. And when it was created, when it was designed, email wasn't supposed to be safe, wasn't supposed to be secure. It's a very, the SMTP protocol is super easy and uh, exploitable. Basically, the way it's, it's designed, SMTP, allows anybody to send 
email posing as somebody else. So you should, probably you know that already. If you don't, that's the way it is. So I can literally pretend to be any domain in the world. It, there's an asterisk. That's what we are, we are here today. But that's how it was supposed to be. Then we as a community, um, we started to say, OK, we have to figure out a way to put so solution security layers on top of this, because you can't just get rid of SMTP. So let's uh, create additional stuff. And those are SM SPF, became a DMARC, actually. Um, I wanted to, at the very first, I say, oh, I'm going to impress them with some numbers about how many billions of euros every day are being scammed out of people using phishing. And I was like, they know, they already know. They, I mean, I know that you are aware that phishing is a problem, that email scams are a problem. So you know that. The main points are anybody can potentially impersonate you or your business. And I see that all the time. Unfortunately, uh, scamming people around and art you, your business, your family as well, depending the kind of scam they are running. You're gonna lose money, the face, your identity sometimes. And the solution we came out with is email authentication. So, why we are talking about email authentication at the WordCamp? Because, yeah, we have to face it. WordPress sends email. It doesn't matter if you're sending one, two emails just to say, oh, the, the plugins got updated, or uh, a transaction or stuff like, OK, um, this is your, your uh, password recovery link, or whatever. Those are emails. But we also know, we are very aware, that WordPress is also being used to, uh, as an e-commerce sometimes, or uh, a social network as well. So those websites send much more emails. So it becomes an even more serious issue. So. The solution I said is email authentication. We didn't cover yet what it is. But the email authentication with WordPress is not an easy task. It's not something that you can do super easily out of the box. It's not something that it was meant to, to be done. Um, and of course, if you don't do that, somebody can, can take advantage of it. And there's also people that it's not and I spoke with some of them that are not pursuing email authentication on WordPress, uh, or not on WordPress, elsewhere, because they can do it on WordPress. Because the thing is, when we implement email authentication, you should do it with all your mail streams. So that's the, that's the deal. That's the thing. OK, so the solution. The solution is that, yeah, it was hard to do it. It's not like it was impossible, but you usually have to rely on a cost, you know, an external SMTP service, something like that. And basically, uh, me and a couple of friends, uh, we came out with a plugin that allows to do that. And this, is, this speech is not about the plugin itself. Actually, it's about the authentication, why it cares, etc. I'm going to mention this now, show a couple of slides about it. But again, if you want to talk about the plugin, we, we'll do it elsewhere, if needed. Um, but just to give you an idea of what it does, since many of you are uh, more technical and advanced, uh, than the usual um, user, user, user. Um, well, as I was saying, many websites find the solution to use and rely uh, on an SMTP service, right? Well, but we all know, or many of us know, that WordPress sends email by out of the box using PHP mail. So our solution uh, is basically we are intercepting whatever is going out with the PHP mail. We take the message, we generate the signature that is required um, to properly authenticate the message. We put it back. The mail comes out. The mail authenticated. Uh, they didn't have to, to pay or to rely on external service. Everything is coming out from the server using the PHP mail. PHP mail su support by itself, in a way, the authentication. But actually, I also discussed with the, with the, with the maintainer and developer uh, recently about this. He didn't want to change a couple of things. So we create a couple of workarounds to make sure that PHP mail works with our plugin. And that works, so that's good. Um, but OK, that being said, what is email authentication for whoever uh, doesn't know or wants to just understand more? And again, I don't know a lot of stuff, but I know a lot about email and about email authentication. So feel free to ask anything you want about email authentication year after, I don't know, 
remained during the night. Um, my wife already gave up about it. So, um, okay. So what it is, of course, as I said, it's to protect the identity of the sender. And the three main, there are more, but the three main protocols that are currently used um, are SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. SPF is about the source, the IP, the email is coming from. The DKIM is about the content being encrypted and verified, so it's not changed. And the DMARC is something that relies on that and does two slash three purposes, reporting, pro um, so basically you have visibility. You can monitor whatever is going on with your domain. That's huge, guys. That if you're not using that, it's very important. And the policy. The policy means that you can instruct the mailbox providers, and by mailbox providers, I mean Gmail, Microsoft, Telefonica, whatever, it's providing a mailbox to the end user. It's telling them, if you see something fishy, if there's something that you don't like in the authentication, do that, or do this other stuff. So the policy is like, if you don't like it, reject it, so bounce it. If you don't like it, put it in the spam folder. So the policy allows you, as administrators, to tell the end provides what to do with the email if that is using your domain. That's the thing. Somebody is using your domain, okay, let's instruct them um, to do what we'd like to see to be done with regards to that. So that's the thing. Let's very quickly, again, I don't want to go too much in depth. I prefer to keep it more interactive, as more interactive as possible. So um, one of the commonality among those email authentication methods is that they rely on DNS. So the administrator, the webmaster, whoever has to publish a DNS record somewhere. That's, that's the thing. And each of them might end in a certain outcome. So an SPF could fail or could pass. A DMARC could fail, could pass. A DKIM could fail, could pass. So that is just the, the, the very basic concept that you have to keep in mind. There is a certain outcome, OK? And well, um, <laughs> the, the thing is, uh, especially with, the, with DMARC, is that so SPF and DKIM help you authenticate your traffic. But DMARC, as I said, is the one that gives you the ability to truly instruct the mailbox provider on what to do. So DMARC is definitely the best thing you can do to protect your brand, to protect the, the domain that you manage. Still, the way DMARC works is that basically it relies on SPF and DKIM. So if you don't uh, put in place a proper SPF or, not and, or DKIM, uh, the DMARC will fail. So the problem is that not always you can implement those, especially in a WordPress website. And that's why we are here again. Um, so, and again, you have to imagine that there are many types different types of businesses. There are businesses that only have web one domain name. Others have one domain name, then they have the subdomain for the shop, the subdomain for uh, certain communication, et cetera, et cetera. So um, sometimes they authenticate certain stuff, and they don't authenticate others. So you should actually try to authenticate as, as much things as possible. Um, so SPF, a little, little, little bit more into details, what it is. Um, so uh, just one. I also have a la laser pointer. I can use this to annoy people that is falling asleep. OK? <laughs> kidding, kidding. It's OK. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> no, it's uh, I, OK. Um, SPF. Sorry, guys. Uh, SPF is saying, remember, it's a DNS record, right? It's saying on this, uh, this domain can be used only from this list of IP is a list of IPs, N nothing more. So Gmail will see the email, will check the SPF record, will see the list of IP, will compare the IP, the emails coming from with the list, and say, it is, the, is it there? Pass. It's not there. Fail. Again, there are many uh, you know, things in between, actually. There are soft fails, stuff like that. But Let's keep it simple. So that's the, basically the outcome that could be done. And that's what it is. It's about the source. OK, what about DKIM? 
Dikim, it's interesting one. Um, Dikim is about making sure that the content is not being edited, modified, changed, tempered in any ways. So if I send an email, potentially, again, some, uh, we are dealing with the limits of the SMTP uh, protocol. But basically, if I send an email, somebody that received that email could potentially replay or, in other terms, reuse whatever we send to them to impersonate us. So it's, it's not good. They could change something. And everything will look, will look fine. Yeah, please. OK, will do. Um, OK, so Dikim, what it does? Dikim relies on encryption and asymmetric uh, encryption. So basically, there's two keys, a private key and the public key. Again, to keep it simple, the, in, within the limits of discussing about this stuff, but the, the private key allows to create a digital signature by taking part of the message. So you believe that the uh, from adder, it's an important one. You believe that the subject is also an important one. So you decide, OK, I want to make sure that nobody changes the from and the ob object and the subject. OK? Um, so you, you say, OK, let's generate a signature using those and the private key. The private key is in a safe place. It's in a vault. OK. Gmail gets your, your message, see the signature that is just a message header. It's a line in the, in the headers of your email. Check that, see that, retrieve the public key. So not the, not the, uh, the private, the public key that is on your domain, and use that to validate the signature. Again, it's encryption stuff. It's OK, sometimes even too nerdy even for us. But the idea is. By using that, they can check it. They can check it, and again, they can say, yeah, it's valid. Pass. It's not valid. Fail. OK, so the, this is a very interesting thing. And of course, the private key, you, have, you are the only one having that specific private key. And you can only use that key to sign your messages. No one else, hopefully, knows the key, so can, do, can pretend to be you. And that public key that is published on the DNS is the only one that can be used to verif verify, validate. You know? And anybody, any, uh, literally everybody, can, can access to that because it's on the DNS. Um, please. Sorry, uh, send it to? OK, sure, OK. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I get it. Right. OK, so um, to be honest, I didn't get why this has to, what, what this has to do with the, with the non-openers. Oh, probably I, I think I, I got it. Uh, but let me, yeah. Uh, so by picking the from and the subject, for example, for the signature, you are saying those are the, the headers I want to protect. The, I want to make sure that nobody changed them. It's about the same campaign, the same message. It's, it's not about, yeah, you are talking about a marketing strategy where you are saying, OK, I want to resend to send a new campaign to the non-openers. No big deal. It's you. It's, you have full control, whatever you're doing. Uh, it's, not big, it's not a problem. The problem is uh, somebody. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think that, that we, we have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the talk, you can ask more things. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, 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 I can flow. Because, yeah, because it, this, yeah, yeah, this brings us a little bit uh, of fraud, uh, to be honest. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but we, we covered it for sure. Thank you. So the DMARC, as I was saying, uh, it's about, it relies on SPF and DKIM. OK? And as I was saying also, it tells what to do. 
Now, uh, luckily I already explained that, so we can uh, move on. And this is the, the plugin that we developed. Okay, um, somebody already took the QR code, but yeah, it's already in the repository. We didn't advertise that much. We didn't, uh, you know, we didn't do a lot of um, publicity about it. Uh, it works. It does what it was supposed to do. We are just making it a little bit cooler, et cetera, et cetera. But what this plugin does? So the way SPF, DKIM, and DMARC work, basically, you can pretty easily implement an SPF and the DMARC by themselves. Implementing DKIM, though, since it requires that private key in the vault, it's not that easy. So that's why you usually have to rely on uh, external services and uh, SMTP services, etc. And as I was saying, we allow to um, generate a pair of keys, because it's a pair of keys. One, it's in a safe place. Uh, and the other one, the user can publish it and they can sign their messages. Since we are there, basically, since we have a plugin uh, about email authentication, um, we decided to basically put some sort of a score about the status of the email authentication of the domain. So if you implement this plugin, you can also see a good UR if there are any errors. Again, I try to put as much as possible in terms of experience of common error, common mistakes when implementing those records. So the, the, the plugin will tell you, there is this problem, go fix it, it to get an higher score. And again, we are still improving stuff. We are adding support for you know, checking if the IP, where you are in, the domain, or whatever, you're on a blacklist. We are implementing so much stuff. But the core, the true core, as I was saying, is that, you see, this, this one is saying um, there's an error on the SPF, etc. We also have um, some stats about the emails being sent every day. And there is the, now I'm going to use this not to annoy anybody, but just to point that there's uh, the, key, the public key. It's this bunch of nonsense. This is a public key for Dikim that the user can take and publish on the specific OK. Uh, yeah, anyways, you got it. Uh, on a specific um, location on the DNS, because that's how, how it works. OK. So um, benefits of email authentication and why everybody should, should, uh, should implement it. OK, well, you don't want your domain to be used by somebody else, so better to be abused. And uh, we already discussed that, but there's more. There's more. As I was saying, sometimes you don't um, do full force, enforcing, for example, DMARC, because you can't do DKIM everywhere. Uh, everywhere. So the, the, any of you ever um, implemented DMARC and maybe uh, looked at some DMARC report? Don't be shy. <laughs> it was a long time ago, so I don't Still. Okay. Uh, but the, the hosting the, the stole me the DMARC, and now I know why. <laughs> cool. Exactly. So now I exactly. And again, we can discuss it. And if you want more uh, and understanding or just some technicalities related to it, I'm really very happy. I yeah. <laughs> I really love to talk. I was discussing <laughs> a little bit Sam that basically, yeah, yesterday I spoke seven hours straight. So maybe I just, uh, but so I will feel any, <laughs> any silence, don't worry. Um, but a DMARC report is basically telling you those are the mail streams. So the mail streams for your domains mean uh, your domain is being used by this mail server. Is being used by this other mail server. So that's the kind of report that you get implementing DMARC. So that's why it's super cool. Because you have finally visibility on where is being used your, your domain. Now, um, there is a purpose on that. Of course, it's to, to uh, fight any, any abuse, to prevent that somebody is abusing it, as again. Um, but it's also about is also about um, go and fix whatever it's yours and it's not authenticated. Because when, once you do that, you will realize 
that, oh, I forgot that I also have Zendesk. I don't know, for example, using the same domain or a subdomain of it. So, OK, I go there and fix it. Oh, I didn't realize they have did and then that. OK, so that, that's the, the, the goal. And that's why DMARC it's, it should be implemented with some strategy, some logic, some understanding what they're doing, because you start with a policy that says just collect the, the data, just collect the reports. I don't I want you to take any uh, action, DR Gmail. Don't reject it, don't put it in spam, do nothing but record it. I want to know. So after some time that you collected enough data, you can say, OK, you know what? Let's move to a more stricter policy. Let's move to a quarantine. The quarantine is, if there's something you don't like, put it in, an, uh, in the spam folder, and so on. And then you go to the reject one. OK, so that's how, how it works, how it does. Um, and the thing is, sometimes people will <laughs> have, again, a certain business and forgot that they have a WordPress website. So the marketing team uh, heard that there is this new cool kid in town called Bimi, for example. Did you ever heard of Bimi? No, not yet. Bimi allows um, senders to show, to display their icon, their logo in the, in, in the client, in the mailbox client. So if you open your mail, you will see a nice logo next to the brand. Not anybody can, can, can have that. You know, and now, since a couple of days ago, uh, Gmail is also showing, and now it's, you know, everybody is using uh, just blue mark, but yeah, Gmail is also showing a blue mark other than, than the logo to say, we, you should trust them because it's truly them. If it says that it's from Groupon, it's truly Groupon. Okay, so that's, that's uh, the idea. Uh, so it's, um, it's cool. So the marketing people, that, that usually they have the budget. They, so we are just at their mercy. Uh, the marketing people say, Okay, let's spend a lot of money to implement Beamy because it's cool, because it will show the, the logo, et cetera. And now the more tech people will be called, oh, you have to implement Beamy. Okay, how do you implement Beamy? Well, to implement Beamy, you need the DMARC. To <laughs> implement DMARC, you need to dig him. And that's when people realize that some of their websites, for example, are uh, they, they run on, on WordPress. Uh, they could, <laughs> you know or not easily, so they have to pay, probably pay more money, and external service, maybe some customs, custom configurations and custom script to do it. Okay, so that's a thing, that's a kind of issue that we try to address. Um, but again, it's gonna be more and more important. If you are not authenticating your domain or your client's domain, please do it. Please try to uh, learn more about, about this stuff so that you can Start with the very basics, because in the past the bad guys uh, they didn't they didn't care about doing the right stuff. Now we have bad actors, so the, the, the abusers, the scammers that are doing things better than legitimate businesses. Okay, so please guys, uh, do the right thing and make sure to differentiate yourself from the spammers. And that's it. Any any question? <laughs> Yes. Uh, Mike. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction. Uh, I'm curious, you said about collecting the, the information about abuse and then looking at the logs yes. of what happens. Uh, if, if I'm having a, a client website, how, where do I collect this data? Do I need a third party? And how do I an analyze the data? Beautiful question. So once you will see a DMARC record, you will get it. You will see that in the DMARC record, there is the policy, P equals something, so it's an attribute. And there's also uh, another field. It's called uh, RUA or, um, or, or RUF, depending which one we are going to use that, is listing an email address. So if you, usually you put your email address as an administrator, or um, if you're relying on a third-party service that is ingesting the data and is displaying it some, somehow, um, you're using their email address. Or the beauty of DMARC is that you can actually put as many 
email addresses there you want, so you can put both if needed. Now, th those email addresses will receive an, a, a report in XML format. So it's not very easy to read if you're not familiar with it, because, I mean, it's a big deal, it's an XML, still you can read it. But a lot of people will just, oh, what's going on? So um, third-party services exist, as I was saying. They ingest this data, and they put it in a more readable form. And also, the cool thing, and that's why actually those are, even if they are you know, paid service or whatever, oh, but they're doing the good thing because they allow you to, to really visualize, to filter the data, to dig. You know. And uh, again, they will tell you this mail stream passed authentication. This other didn't pass authentication. So you start from there. It's not the end. It's the beginning you know, of another investigation, but it's a very important one. Again. The risk is you implement it, and then you just put an admin at whatever, and nobody will ever look at it. And in, in five years, they're going to see they have uh, 300 reports, and nobody was, was you reading that. You are so right. So right. Uh, I see the, that all the time. Not only people that put an email address and just forget about it, but also people that don't put any email address. So the whole point of DMARC is to collect the reports. If you are not collecting reports, what they are doing? Nothing. It's, it's, yeah. Again, sometimes people do it because somebody told them to do it. So that's the very first thing is get interested, get, try to know more about email authentication, why, you know, all this stuff, and do it right. Um, yeah. So absolutely right. Yeah. I, <laughs> I saw it so often. Yeah. It hurts. It hurts. Uh, any more question? Yes, please. The, down there. The operator, nice. Uh, hi, thank you for the speech. Uh, in my case, yeah, I had a doubt. Yeah, I, I, I used to, when I, my customers get into spam, my solution for now was to install a, an SMTP plugin. What is your position, uh, what is your uh, posi uh, position re regarding to this? So, um, email, uh, starting from here, I'll say that uh, email authentication is not by itself, not necessarily, a solution to the spam folder. If you're landing in spam, it's not necessarily for the inbox. It's not like, oh, oh I, I'm landing in spam, I implement authentication, everything will be in inbox. Sometimes it is, and could be for a couple of reasons. One of them is DMARC. If that client maybe had a DMARC record and you didn't know, it's possible. Um, well, if they had a DMARC record, the DMARC record was probably with a policy quarantine, P equal quarantine. So that, that email weren't be authenticated. So basically, uh, DMARC was just doing what it was supposed to do, telling everybody it's not authenticated, put it in spam. So you say, oh, oh gosh, what I do, what I do, let's try with the symmetry service. Whoa, it works. Probably it worked because the, it was passing, um, passing SPF, probably. But I'm saying probably because I should dig a little bit more. Uh, there is another aspect that I didn't mention that is the, uh, the concept of alignment. But it's completely, yeah, we, again, if we, uh, if we had two more hours, we could cover the, the aspect of alignment. But um, could be because of that, or maybe they were actually DKIM signing. Because uh, again, external submitting service do. So could be that. Could also be some other stuff. Uh, because when you send the emails, the keyword, the magic keyword is reputation. So the mailbox provider not only want to see um, if it's truly you, well, they also want to know how trustworthy you are. So they, they have some sort of um, yeah, list saying, you're good, you're bad, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, a list of good people, good senders, a list of bad people. And to do that, they have to be able to identify you. And if you don't implement email authentication, sometimes uh, you are sharing the reputation with the space you are in. So uh, you are sharing the reputation with the mm, hosting provider and everybody that is using that certain 
space in the, in the same Austin providers, or stuff like that. OK. So it's possible that by authenticating, the customer was able to say, it's me, it's just me. Don't take into account the other people that is using the same, you know. So it could be, it could be more complex. But I will say that probably could be DMARC, the, the issue. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, of, of, uh, hopefully it was enough. Yes, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so then you can use the the two plugins at yeah. the same time, or, or it's not. Yes, the yes, you could do it. Yes? Okay. Now uh, you could use both together. Um, probably. So the thing is, if emails are being sent out with that asymmetry, okay, I, I should check which one is using if it's compatible and everything. The cool thing is that you could put as many Dikim signature you want. So it could be not a big deal that it's Dikim signing with that service. We can add an additional Dikim sign signature. It could be seen as a, an additional layer of security, so it could be good. And also, actually, my plugin uh, provides all the other information. It tells you if there's an error, an error which error is, if, or there are the other records that we are publishing that are not publishing, and we are recommending to do it to improve. So actually, yeah, it could work pretty well. Um, I'd like to test it because I want to make sure that <laughs> we are compatible with that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you, you, could do, you could use them both. Or if you just need to become sign, you could use just mine, <laughs> right? Yeah, but you can yeah, I mean, to add yeah. yours and then check it. Okay. Right. Thank exactly. you. Cool. I think we're done, right? Do you have another question? Yes. Whoa, whoa. Uh, does the plugin you develop only gives the information, but don't actually fix the the issue? No, no, right? it does. It does. It fixes it. It fixes it. It, yeah. it does fix it yeah, because yeah, yeah. I know you need to add some records to exactly, the DNS, exactly. right? No, you still have to to publish the public uh, the public key. That's still important because it's the way the uh, mailbox providers can verify the signature. Mm -hmm. So we are providing a key that you have to publish in the DNS. But other than that, mm -hmm. uh, you're so done. Because we are covering all the, the things under the hood, you know, mm -hmm. uh, behind the curtain. Yeah. We are using the private key that we generated for that specific client okay. to generate the signature. So the, the idea is that, yeah, they just have to publish the key. They don't have to, again, pay for another service, whatever, or use a service, because it's also about the technology. The way it works is that the plugin works with uh, literally any website out of the box, because we are relying on PHP mail. It's already there. Um, so that's the thing. It's, we found a workaround to do this uh, without you know, any other stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Thank you for the work you're doing with no this problem. plugin. Please and upload. Or still have the laser, uh, laser guys. No, <laughs> please. No. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to test it on a, right. on a site. And yeah. Um, oh yeah. Uh, please, 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 please let me know any feedback. The the plugin works, uh, but it was released very recently. So any feedback you can provide to improve it, please do. If there's any issue, any problem, just let me know. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to have, a, if you have more questions, you are going to be in the speakers room now. And this is a little present for you. And oh. please uh, <laughs> give him a big applause for this talk. Yeah.